reaction profile, just a way of representing a reaction on, on the page as a graph. Well, then there's already a question. Oh my gosh. Oh no, this is about the catalyst. Okay. For a catalyst, do we have to know just like that they accelerate a reaction, or would we have to calculate anything? Uh, there's no calculation that I could think of for a catalyst. Well, you find activation energy, for example, using the radius equation. So, here's a reactant. If this is a thermodynamically favorable reaction, am I going down or up? Yeah. Down for thermodynamically favorable products. Up if I want unfavorable products, or un, uh, not thermodynamically favorable, or unfavored. So the energy or the heights between the two tells you if it's favorable thermodynamically. Let's just take the bottom one here. The, the height of this peak, which is the activation energy, so the difference between these two lines is the enthalpy, delta H, or delta U. The height of the peak is the activation energy, and that's kinetics. So a kinetically unfavored reaction has a huge hill. A kin, uh, unfavored, a kinetically favored reaction has a small hill. You can also have uh, intermediates. So, you make your graph again, and you can have as many intermediates as you want. Like this. And let's say this is A, B, C, D. How many intermediates? Two. Two, B and C. As the reaction goes forward, is it favorable or unfavorable? Depends if you say kinetics or thermodynamics. Thermodynamically. Favorable because it goes from A to D downhill. Delta H is exothermic or negative. Uh, as far as going forward, I mean, depending on how you view the height of the highest peak, looks kind of high, so it seems kin kinetically not that favorable. Okay? Um, if I was sitting at C, Given enough energy and time, what would be, uh, what letter would I go to? D. D. An energy and time have to do, so long times takes kinetics out of the picture. If you're making the time near infinite. So, you're going to D is the most favorable of A, B, C, and D because it's the lowest energy. So the lowest energy is also the most favorable thermodynamically, given the long enough time. If I'm, go, if I'm sitting at C and I don't have much time, I want to go as fast as possible, where am I going to go? Again to D, because that's the smallest hill going to the right. If I'm sitting at B, and it's kinetically controlled, so it's kinetic, what's the most kinetically favorable? What letter? A, because that's the smallest hill to go to the left. It's a bigger hill if I go to the right. Okay? You see how this works? Any questions about this? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'll label. She's asking about labeling. I'll label this. And the test you're talking about, I guess you'll have to show me. You can show me after we finish. This would be delta H. It'd be a negative number. Uh, and there'd be several activation energies. So I'll just do it for the first one right here. There's going from A to B, there's the activation energy. Okay, so it's the height of the peak that you have to go up. The transition state is the top of the peaks. So these are transition states. These are bottom wells, little intermediate wells are called intermediates. Uh, if you add a catalyst, Let's say you add a catalyst that helps the B to C part of the reaction. All that does is do this. It changes the path. That's what a catalyst does. It lowers the activation energy, makes the hill shorter, new path. So that's how catalysts and reaction profiles go together. Yes? You 
If you're at B and you have a really long time thermodynamically favored, where would you go? D. You eventually get to D, because that's the lowest energy state. No matter where you start, the most thermodynamically favorable, favored endpoint would be D, because it's the lowest energy state. Yes? Uh, what do you need to label the EA reverse? I'll list, if you have to draw something, I'll list what to label. So you'll know exactly what to put on there. Yeah? If the D was above the middle dotted line, then yes, you're correct. That would be endothermic. Delta H would be positive. That would be unfavored. Yes? Last one. Okay, there's still activation energy when it's, therm when it's endothermic? <laughs> yes, there's still activation energy when it's endothermic. Look at the reverse reaction. See how there's an activation energy that goes from here to the top of the peak, say, going to C. So, yeah, there's always activation energy.